Hi, this is Madeline from Sonic Bloom, and this is the last segment of my four-part mini-series on generative music with Ableton Live's MIDI effects. We looked at the generation of bass lines, melodies and chords individually in the first three episodes, so I'd suggest that if you haven't watched them yet, to do so either before this video or after. I've linked the playlist above and in the description below as well. This time we're going to see how we can generate all these parts together at once and then explore other features in Ableton Life that can help us to diversify, capture and refine the media output further. So before we go into generating all parts together, I just wanted to say that I've been creating media fact tracks for the bass, melody and chord generation that are for Life 11 that you can download for free or for a small donation if you'd like to say thanks. You can find the link in the description below as well. And I just wanted to quickly go through what you can generate with them. So bass. And of course you can also make changes with the 16 macros that I've mapped. Let's get on to the second one. And that is Melody. And then we also have chords. And especially with uh, melody gen and chord gen, you can use the random button to randomize the macro control values, especially with chord gen and melody gen. That works really well. And now let's get to the last part of the free download, and that is the live set that we're going to be working in today as well. Okay, so this technically is the live set you're getting with the free download as well. But while the first four tracks are the same, the other four are empty, so they don't contain any MIDI instruments, so you can drop your own bass, melody preset and chord preset that you want. Same for the drums. So now let's look at what's the most important part if you want to generate all the elements, so bass, melody and chords at the same time and make sure that they sound well together. So initially when I showed everything for the individual sounds, then I put the random here in front of the device chain. But now I actually have a node gen track that only has the random MIDI effect on it. We take the output from this first track and the next three. So that the same note that is generated from the random output is received by the bass gen track, by the melody gen track and the chord gen track. And then the MIDI instrument tracks take the MIDI output from these three tracks Respectively, on the bass track, I have pitch, arpeggio, velocity, and the scale preset. Here I've got note length and the note echo included in the melody generation. And here I have the expression control in as well. And so here I have a, a C2 that is actually just a half note. Then in the bass generation track, which is an extra feature when you're routing MIDI tracks into other MIDI tracks or taking the output from another MIDI track as well. 
that you can add more MIDI clips that, that have notes on them to generate more notes and more diversity. And I've done the same with the chord gen where I've added a C3 and now we can just listen to how it sounds. And just a tip, whereas like the MIDI effect racks that I built can create quite complex sounds, I would recommend that if you want to generate everything at once to kind of be a bit more minimal and not overdo everything at once because then that can sound kind of like too much again. So this is why I have taken it back a notch with what's actually happening in these tracks in terms of like what the MIDI effects are doing. Okay, and so if you want, you can actually use this routing technique to, for example, create polymeters. So I could take this of the chord generation and just shorten this, or I could lengthen it as well, so that it runs through faster and loops faster than the initial node generated that is a bar long. And then we can just, I'm gonna turn these two off so we can listen just to the chord generation. You get the point. And of course, if you would like to have more nodes being fed in, for example, if you want to have polymeters and have like, that happening a lot, then you could simply create another MIDI track. And we're going to take the MIDI again from the first track, the node gen, and then send that out to the chord gen, or like whatever track you want. I have to arm this one, and then we can create another MIDI clip. We could add more notes there. So I could say like, okay, I want this just like this long. And we could just play this as well. So you can make this quite complex and get a lot of different results this way. And we could also employ follow actions to have more variety in when the chords are played. You can play around with that. So let's have a quick try with that. So we could make this really short, add a MIDI note. Here, maybe a C3. And then move this here. We're going to unarm this track. And yep, okay, we've got all three clips selected. Then we can turn on the follow actions. And I'm going to choose other, which means that a random MIDI clip is played next, but not the one that's currently playing. You could also go more complex. I'm going to link my follow action video if you're unsure on how to do this, you can also use scene follow actions, which I describe in there as well. And now we can just play this as well. And so on and so forth. So this is another possibility of how you can include that to create more interesting results. And of course, all of this has quite a randomness to it. And you might not want to keep this output the way it is, because you would like to have some more control over it. At least I do. And so I thought I'd show you how we can achieve this by employing the comping feature. So I'm going to do this just with a chord generation. So let's unarm these two tracks and then arm 
the eighth track, the Glitchy Roads preset, because that's what we're going to record into, and I'm already going to set monitoring to auto, so that afterwards we can actually hear and probably see what we've recorded. And then we also need to stop this clip, and I'm going to set the loop to on, and I've already got it to four bars in the beginning, which is great for demonstrating how we can use the comping feature. And I think we're ready to start recording. Okay, so that's enough. We're gonna, I'm gonna set this to all that, and then we're gonna do a right click and say show take lanes. Of course, you can also use the shortcut. And then we're gonna zoom in here with Z or Z, depending on where you come from. And then we can simply turn the drawing tool on and then try different options. Let's say this one. Let's take this, maybe this instead. Here we're going to take this part and this. And then we could listen to what we've got. <laughs> nope, we're going to have to make sure that this is no longer output. And so on and so forth. I don't want to make this video too long. And of course, what we also have as options is now that we've recorded this out, I'm just going to take this and do Command J. So we got one MIDI clip out of this and we can enlarge this. And so in Life We 11, turn off the draw, we also have more random features in the MIDI clip that we got new. So it's the chance and velocity that we see here. So first of all, we can create a velocity range for all nodes here because they are currently all selected. So I could say like, okay, velocity range of say 50 so that we get even more variation in velocity. We don't necessarily need this because I had a velocity preset on it to kind of randomize and thus more humanize the velocity output for each generated node. And so what's especially interesting, maybe not so much for chords, because then this would be on a per note basis, although this could be interesting as well. But I think it's particularly interesting for melodies and maybe bass as well, is that we could change the chance setting for the MIDI notes to be played. We could either, you know, individually select say all these notes and take this down. I'm gonna undo this or instead you could use the randomize feature so you could set the percentage of how much it's supposed to be randomized and then we could randomize this for either the selected MIDI notes or all of them and so you got different probabilities now for if the note is going to be played or not. And then of course if we're going back to gonna, take this down again. Let's say I take this and, well, I'm actually going to create a new one. Take the Melody Gen preset and drop this in here and then route this from the first track and then take this and make sure I get this in there. Then what I would be able to do as well is to not only jump through different variations and record the output, but I could also automate the macros, you know, on the fly, change things on the fly, so you get even more variations. I'm sure you probably know this, otherwise this is something for another video, but it's getting too long anyways. So this is another thing you could try. So yeah, that's it for this video and the whole tutorial series. I hope you found this useful. If you download the presets and the live set and you have a little bit of money to spare, I would be very appreciative if you could donate a little bit, but you can also get it for free always. 
If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye!